What's up everybody, Polius here, welcome to another episode of Let's Play Apatheia. I am sitting here outside the vineyard of Dionysus. <clears throat> Let's read this. Ah, Euripides. Two gods are first among men. The goddess Demeter, she is the earth, but call her whatever name you wish. She nourishes mortals with dry food. But he who came afterwards, Dionysus, discovered a match to it. The liquid drink of the grape introduced it to mortals that releases wretched mortals from grief whenever they are filled with the stream of the vine, and gives them sleep, a means of forgetting their daily troubles, nor is there another cure for hardship. So, uh, Euripides is funny. He's not a very... Alright, uh, yeah. So, I've actually done this before, um, a couple of times, like I was basically 20 minutes of trying to do this challenge. For whatsoever things vex Demeter, vex also Dionysus, for Dionysus shares the anger of Demeter. We, uh, in my classic class, read Aristophanes the Frogs. Oh, did I miss an Hey. Oh. No. So, uh, My new friend, you look like a robust fellow. How about a little drinking contest? Fill your cup with my wine, drink and be merry. Let the joy of inebriation wash away the storm clouds <clears throat> of these troubled times. <laughs> drink to keep the dismal phantom of sobriety at bay. If you cannot keep pace with the thiasis of Dionysus, <laughs> then you have no place within these halls. All right. We're not going to drink that, though. We're going to go over here. So if we fail, then we pass out. So. Away with you, sobriety. There we go. I need that. It's less important. Drink. Charming is the vehemence of the satyrs when they dance, and charming is their ribaldry when they laugh. They are given to life, noble creatures that they are, and they subdue the Lydian woman with their will with their will by their artful flatteries. And this, this too is true of them. They are hardy, hot-blooded beings, with prominent ears, lean about the loins, altogether mischievous, and having the tails of horses. Right. Everyone is just totally wasted here. Gonna hurry here, get to this one, and drop down. I have to run up. Oh, come on. Yes. Gonna run over here. No, no, no. Drink. Be merry. Be merrier. Be merrier. Come on, no, stop it. Darkness consumes me. Made it! Almost. Just one more. Up here. No! So that's the the struggle. I think I lost a, a spear, so I need to make sure I'm actually using slings. I don't care about losing sling stones. Losing that door stinks, though. That's how scared I am. I'm shut off from it. Alright, can't hit the uh, explosive pot. Awesome. Great timing. Like that. I'll let that there for now. And I'll drink this. And run this way. The trick is kind of to get it, cheat a little bit of extra movement out of it. Right. By just positioning. Where I take a drink is actually important. So I'll drink here. And then we'll jump up. Skip the stairs. I actually need 
can make that. Come on, buddy. Mechandrus! No! Come on, Mechandrus. Where does the darkness take you? I know I could be using that uh, raid as a shortcut. But I gotta hurry and get down to Dionysus before. My, my, it seems like everyone else has had too much yes. wine. What a pity. Meddlesome eavesdroppers would have much to gossip. What's... I know who you are and why you're here, Nicandrios. The vines of Dionysus creep to all corners of the world. Dionysus is really Zeus on our side. is a tyrant and a fool to separate the gods from the earth. There are many on Olympus who oppose his rule in secret. I will continue to play the fool to learn what I can from loosened tongues. That but is... you, you are more direct, I think. You will soon draw the wrath of Zeus himself and will need all the help you can get. I give to you my sacred Cantharos, font of my power. Let the taste of joyous times flow back to your people. Ha <laughs> ha! Go with my blessings, my friend! This humble earthen drink, uh, drinking cup carries the power of wine and freedom. Effects of potions last 25% longer. Oh. Plus 9 health. Alright. Do so you have anything else to say? Anyway, so, um... In cl my classic class one time, we had a play called, uh... What was it? Aristophanes the Frogs. And the story is set during the Peloponnesian War. Um, and, the, and Dionysus is sad that there's no more culture in Greece, or in Athens at the time. That, you know, there's no more plays, anything like that. So he goes to Hades to seek out... Uh, to seek out a, uh, a famous playwright. And ends up... Deciding, I think between Sophocles and Euripides, and again, this is a play, so I was given the part, uh, while we were, we were reading it in class, I was given the part of reading as uh, Euripides, and I basically tried making the most annoying voice I possibly could, because Euripides was wholesale the goat of the piece. Alright, so I don't want to fight any anyone yet. Uh, I want to see what happens if I actually win the game. Or if I go through without, you know, murder. Or with minimal murder. Hey, it's Zeus. Who's this? What's this? Mount Olympus, where they say, is the abode of the gods that stand fast forever. Neither it is shaken by winds, nor ever wet with rain, nor does snow fall upon it. But the air is outspread clear and cloudless, and it hovers over a radiant whiteness. Therein the blessed gods are glad all their days. Okay. That was from Homer, by the way. Bonk. You're lucky there's no Goomba stomping here. This honor she has from the beginning, and this portion allotted to her amongst men and undying gods, the whisperings of maidens and smiles and deceits with sweet delight and love and graciousness. Chambers of Aphrodite. Alright, let's get an SFW here. Let's save her. My dear, but I'm not entertaining any audiences today. Just little cherubs. Up There's there. still space for gifts or tributes if you want to leave something for later. And just be careful not to bump anything, sweetheart. Does she have anything I can take? Pretty okay with being on fire. What have you done, you clumsy oaf? Arrows? 
this pig out to stud with the other swine. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah! Watch where you shoot! <laughs> oh, oh, there's a one-hit kill. Been to any good parties lately? I mean, all right. Well, so, does she remember that, or did I lose stuff? What happened? There? Let's take a look at inventory. So I have all my stuff still. What have you done? <laughs> oh, I can't. Kill people here? Back off! Yeah. I'm an evil archer. Alright, no, seriously, no load. Uh, back here. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're not interested. There's still space. So, how do I leave offerings? I didn't mean to do it. Gravity did it. Okay. Well, I'm sure we'll figure it out later. I guess we're going for Apollo first. That's it. Yep. After the Apollo. As Apollo goes to the house of Zeus, the gods tremble before him. All and all spring up from their seats when he draws near and bends his bright bow, which was tied to uh disease and plague. In the Odyssey, or not the Odyssey, the Iliad, the start, he's, uh, uh, shooting people with plague arrows. Hey, Macarena. Ah, the man who walks like a false god. I have seen you in the mists of prophecy. You seek salvation for your doomed homeland. And do you seek well, pants? I'm afraid your time basking in the sunlight is over. Fathers declared that miserable place not worth the dirt it's made from. We've we wasted enough sweat and tears on your mortal theatrics. The gods gift you with knowledge and civilization to free you from your savage roots. But time and time again, you've come up failing. I'm afraid the sun only shines on those who deserve it. Run along now. My music is not for your ears. So this like... area is for the honored guests of Apollo. <laughs> All right, so can I fight Apollo? That seems like a really bad idea. Let's do it. What are you doing? <laughs> Such audacity from so small a man. If it's my attention you desire, then you shall have it. Fight me, coward. <laughs> oh, that was a cutscene. Someone in there. Is that Helios? I am Helios. And the sun was once my prized treasure. But that snake Apollo stole it from me and imprisoned me down here. Oh. He has broken my body. Never again will I stand upon the burning chariot. Apollo is a powerful god. Any who stand against him are destroyed. Or worse. I, want my I think I can help you. First, you must escape this horrible place. I know of a secret passage. Unfortunately for me, all these years, it's been under your cell, not mine. Take these, my last slivers of sunlight. It will open the wall. Okay. Exit. 
Excellent. Now, escape from this prison. So by sunlight, you mean high explosives. Huh. Got it. I know what, okay. The jaws of a bear. So it's a leg trap, okay. We. I mean, I got to stab Apollo in the crotch. I feel pretty good about myself here. A goblet. Punch that chair. The shadows will not help you here. I see you. We, I mean, I was the bait. Thanks, guys. What was this say? Helios the sun rides the chariot. He shines upon men and deathless gods. And piercingly he gazes with his eyes from his golden helmet. Javelin. Oh, hey, I have arrows now. That's right. everything. Okay. See, now that I've realized that I can just punch things, I'm gonna punch everything. Hey guys. Oh no, he's gone! Milk of Mollywort. Oh, is that literally all my stuff? Okay, yeah, let's craft a few things. Take that. I 
like the Aspis more. I like, I like the Aspis more. Gosh, let me open the door. Once again, Gaia bear to Oranos the sky. Um, Oranos the sky, the Kyclopes, overbearing in spirit. Brontes and Stereopes and stubborn hearted Argies, who gave Gu Zeus the thunder and made the thunderbolt. Well, I'm just failing the Greek legend there. In all else, they were like gods, but one eye only was set in the midst of their foreheads. Oh, the Cyclopses. Oh! Hey, buddy! Oh. Yeah. Actually hit his face. That might. Ho oh, ho! He's back. Stop wrecking this place. Fine. There's a very small target. On, you're dead. Ow. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, the new Aspis. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know what to do. Oh. Um, I can drink. Oh, come on. Yes, please, health. No. Is Dionysus taught you? Take all of this. Ah, how do I do it? He's got. Oh, that double health bar. There it is. Was scary. My friend, you're alive. How did you get out? I escaped in the confusion you made, but oh, we're not okay. out of the woods yet. If you seek to defeat Apollo, there are ways to tilt the scales. Yeah, burn Find the moral nymph bush. Daphne in Apollo's garden. Ah! She carries a deep hatred and will help you more than I can. Yes, she does. The fiery stallions that pull the solar chariot must be unfettered. Apollo will be weakened without his blazing war machine. I mean, he killed me without Finally, it, so... Apollo's trusted lieutenants will guard him with their lives. Put an end to them before they can make such a selfless sacrifice. Go. Free my precious son from that villain's grasp. Good stuff. Uh, 
So, so when I said burn a laurel bush, the story of Apollo and Daphne is, um, Apollo falls in love with this nymph Daphne, and she wants nothing to do with him. To escape him, she gets turned into a laurel bush. And it's one of the funniest things I've ever read. Portraits. Symposium of the Sun. Lock it. Uh, Symposium of the Sun seal is required. All right. I'm not gonna kill anyone who's not fighting me. That said, let's go find Daphne. Like I said, she had tried escaping Apollo by turning into a tree. Or being turned into a tree. And as a result, that's why the laurel wreath is the symbol, one of the symbols of poetic victory in Greece. Aim for the eyes! Ha! Ow. Alright, I got a rock. Squirrel? When Apollo was pursuing the virgin Daphne, daughter of the river of Peneus, um, she begged for protection from Gaia, who received her, and changed her into a laurel tree. Apollo broke a branch and placed it on his head. Funniest poem ever. I will... At the end of this. The wrath of the Illuminator shall burn you! Oh. Oh, man. So, the poem starts off. I love the effect of the sunlight here. Uh, the poem starts off, Apollo has literally just killed a dragon, the great serpent python. And he, you know, he's kind of like... The destroyer has no mercy for intruders. And he's basically, he's, uh, aha. Ow. Uh, he's busy celebrating how awesome he is when uh, he sees Cupid flitting here, flitting there, uh, playing with his bow, you know, as a, as a boy would. Uh, also, I, I, I read this from the Greek poet Ovid. Yeah. Or the Roman poet, so I use the uh, Roman names. But he sees Cupid and he goes, what is this? A little boy playing with the arms of men. Leave such things to warriors as myself. I, who have slain the mighty python, feathered it like a forest of poisoned arrows. And Cupid kind of looks at him, smirks, and goes, You're right, Apollo. Your arrows can conquer anything. But my arrows, well, they can conquer you. And proceeds to, uh... Proceeds to uh, knock a golden arrow of love, and right on Apollo's chest, right in his heart, and then he takes this leaden arrow of hate and aims at the nymph Daphne, who's so beautiful, uh, and asks her god to her, her father, uh, who was a composite person, nice. Drop of radiance, a single ray of sunlight captured an enchanted vessel and released. Chase the darkness away. Oh no. And blast arrows. Oh. I want that Christmas back though. Um, and she asked of her father that she be allowed to remain a virgin. And her father had agreed. So when she sees this more this god, this man, you know, lusting after her. She goes, oh no, and starts running away, but it doesn't help, you know, the, the whole hate arrow thing didn't help it either. But Apollo, he is totally head over heels for this nymph. So he goes chasing after her, and thus the story of, you know, Apollo's first love, it's the line opens, Apollo's first love is not, was not of his decision, but the cruel twists of uh, Eros. And so the rest of the poem is a, is a Wiley Coyote and Roadrunner thing. Um, as she's trying to run from him and he's ow, ow. that was explosive please give me this nope. and he wants nothing to do with her what? oh hello hello the golem is a Jewish myth not a Greek one what are you doing oh, these guys are tough Oh, 
coin box. Nice. All right, so I know how to fight them now. Is that it? Okay. I need water. Water, water, everyone. Now I dropped a drink. So Apollo starts chasing her, and like she starts running to a f Ooh, ow. starts running to a forest, and is like, "Wait, nymph, slow your pace. I do not want you to trip on those uh, brambles or roots. I too shall slow my pace so that we may continue this chase." And, I mean, it's just sad. At one point, he, he starts begging her, you know, please don't run. So, well, it's like, please don't run from me. I'm not some shall shaggy Gallic hound that you must flee as though a hare. And then, like, the, the very writing of the poem, the very uh, meter, is this short, long, long, short, long, long, short, long, long, as though the words themselves make him sound. If you've ever, ever seen a greyhound run it, Looks exactly like that. What? How do I? How do I do this? What? Oh, good lord! Oh, goodbye. And. Ow. Aha! I'm getting the feel for this. Also, I just realized the time, but we're having fun, so we're going to keep going. And so the poem ends with. Why do you keep doing that? Where Daphne realizes she can't escape from the sun. The sun is everywhere. And so she goes, as it says, she asks Gaia, please make him unable to have me as his bride. And Gaia decides, okay, I'll turn you into a laurel tree. Because, you know, that's the best way to do it. So, it's like this graphic body horror description of uh, of this poor oh, uh, this poor woman turning into a laurel tree. Ow. Ow, he's running. Oh. Alright. And it ends with Apollo weeping as this woman has become his, you know, has become a tree that he absolutely, this woman that he loves has become a tree. And he's, uh, he declares that the tree, such trees shall forever be his symbol, the symbol of, of skill and glory. And that's why the laurel is associated with Apollo. Also, Eros is a, is a brat. So, I said, it's just the, the whole story, it's farcical and what it, it does to Apollo's dignity, and it makes me laugh. Like this. But, but then again, I mean, it's. It was written by a guy who got in trouble for having sex with Augustus's uh, daughter. So he's kind of like saying, being in love isn't a man's fault. It's kind of the, the whole meaning of it. Oh. Thank you, stranger. I see you bear no love for Apollo or his servants. Well, no. Ah, Apollo, even in this wooden armor, I cannot escape his lechery. When I was a naiad, he pursued me in the forest. Just before I fell prey to his lust, I prayed for mercy and was transformed into this laurel tree. Then what does he do? He tears me from the earth and plants me in his private gardens. Every day he comes to caress my branches. I am forever sick of his leering face and spidery fingers. The god of poetry, everyone. Groping a an tree. An enemy of Apollo is clearly an ally of mine. Take this ward, an echo of Helios's brilliance. Though he may think otherwise, Apollo does not command all that is bright in this world. Sun disk, blessed by Helios. This brilliant shield emanates the warmth of the sun. Ooh. Does this last forever? Does it, does it never break? I would like that. Uh, oh, I could use those. Um, I think we're going to leave. Oh, we're going to leave it off here because it's getting to be that time. That time. It's that time to go home, neighbors.
but don't worry, there will be more. Oh, well. There will be more uh, Apathy on Goodness in the future. Just have to believe. Alright, well, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all next time.